What do all these people have in common? Hernias, surgery, chronic pain, difficulties walking, pain clinics, not being believed, lost jobs, relationship breakdowns, isolation, depression, suicidal thoughts, mesh. Off. One in ten of us will develop a hernia. The most common treatment involves a doctor pushing any bulging tissue back into the body and covering it with a piece of surgical mesh. If there are complications with the mesh or the way it's implanted, people can suddenly find themselves unable to do the simplest of tasks. This story is about the many patients who are being left behind after undergoing what should be a straightforward procedure. You get you go, oh, you go, oh. Would you like to stand up? Like no, no. David Ellis experiences shocks of pain a couple of times an hour. The 57-year-old says today is actually not too bad. Is it That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah, I will. That's it. David discovered he had a recurring hernia in 2014. His surgeons said they would fix it with keyhole surgery. He says they didn't tell him they would be using a large piece of mesh. He woke up in pain and the outgoing man who loved to play football, who sung, who worked, began to fade away. Being honest, I actually do feel like a freak. Because when, when you do have these attacks, and you've just seen a couple of little ones, people look at you, I don't know they're judging me. David has spoken to his GP and his surgeon about his worsening pain multiple times. He's even attended a pain clinic where he was given injections, pills and acupuncture. Nothing has helped. He felt like doctors didn't believe him, so never formally complained. The lights that I knew is gone. <laughs> I can't even sleep properly. Used to sleep on my front three hours a night, if I'm lucky now. Regularly take pills. I have to, to function. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not something that you'd, you'd choose for yourself. So, that's what I am, that's how I feel. And, yeah, I have... I have so many times come close to ending it because of the pain. How convinced are you that it's the mesh that's causing all these problems? I'm 100%. If I don't ever think I'll get my life back. But I want to be better than I am. Um, with it in me, that's not going to happen. This programme can reveal the NHS has carried out around 570,000 hernia mesh operations in six years, but the procedure has been used since the 90s, so numbers are likely to be even higher. Leading surgeons believe the complication rate is between 12 and 30%, which means up to 170,000 patients could be affected. Yet we found NHS trusts in England have no consistent policy for guidelines on treatment or follow-up with patients. Sometimes the issue is the mesh, sometimes it's how the surgeons use it. If there are problems, few have the skills needed to solve them, particularly within the NHS. What is it like to remove mesh? It's really very, very difficult because um, the mesh is growing into the tissue. The material becomes so stiff, so sharp, that you can nearly hurt yourself if you touch the, if you touch the edge. Dr. Elrik Muschewek is a leading hernia surgeon in the private sector and has carried out 27,000 repairs. She mainly uses a suture technique instead of mesh, but fears her preferred method is dying out because young surgeons are rarely taught it. All the patients I have done so far, it's 80% without mesh and only 20% with mesh. And why do you do that? Because I see so many patients with uh, problems after mesh repair. I have done more than 3,000 mesh removals because of chronic pain. She says 99.9% .9 of these removals have been a success. I only have two patients so far who didn't become pain-free.
after measuring over. Out of 3,000? Yes. We started looking into complications with hernia mesh repairs about 15 months ago. Back then, surgeons who removed the mesh told us they believed thousands of people were living with chronic pain. In our view, the risks of a poor outcome are, are so bad that you know, I wouldn't want to take that risk. Since then, I've spoken to more than 150 people who say the procedure has ruined their life. David Ellis's situation was particularly shocking because the type of mesh used for his hernia repair is now the subject of more than 1,300 lawsuits in the US, though there are currently none in the UK. Dear Mr Ellis, having looked through your notes, I can confirm that the mesh used was an Ethicon Physio mesh. Two years after David's operation, Ethicon voluntarily recalled Physio mesh in 2016. Major studies had found it was prone to higher complication rates when used for keyhole surgery. David has been told there's a 50% chance removing his mesh will make things even worse and he can't afford to go private. Just so you are aware, due to the pain I am experiencing... And... Feeling like he had nowhere else to turn, last year David desperately reached out to the manufacturer of Physio Mesh, Johnson & Johnson. I have contemplated ending my life on several occasions due to the pain, lack of sleep, feeling of worthlessness and depression. I need help, not silence. Regards, David. Reading the email takes David back to a very dark place, but after a few minutes, he said he wanted us to hear the reply. As a medical device company, we are unable to offer you any medical advice although I would strongly recommend that you seek urgent medical attention in relation to the way that you are currently feeling. Johnson & Johnson says it's confident it acted appropriately and responsibly in the research, development and marketing of PhysioMesh. It adds it continually monitors the performance of all of its products, including complaints. You take your car to a garage, you've just got a faulty engine, you know. They say, yeah, we'll take the engine out, we'll put a new one in. And if they stick a faulty engine in again, that's not right, is it? But you can get that sorted out. With me, with others, you can't get it sorted out. The UK's regulator for medical devices is the MHRA. It's told us it has no evidence which would alter its stance on surgical mesh for hernia repairs. David, however, would consider himself evidence. He can't even hold his granddaughter now. He's just not... <laughs> He's just not our dad as we know him. I'm still in here somewhere. I don't like t saying that to you because I don't want to bring you down even further. Well, then you're on the ground, you can't get any lower. And you know that we're always here for you, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I just do what I can to avoid sitting for too long or reaching um, or bending. Um, what was yeah. I say? What's that? <laughs> so this is, um, it's actually for litter picks, but I have repurposed it because if I drop a sock or something and I, I just use this, it's much better because I don't catch the nerve in my hip. How old are you, Jen? 34. And how does it feel having to use something like that to just pick up a sock? It's, the whole thing is completely surreal. I was so active and I was running around, commuting, traveling, working, kayaking, skiing, outdoor swimming, and now I can't pick up a sock from the floor. So it, it's, I try not to let it get me down too much, but obviously there are times where I, I could just scream. It's really maddening. Jen Coles experienced complications following a hernia mesh repair last year. She had to give up her life in London, and now her pain is hidden away behind the walls of her parents' home. When I had the meshes in, I was hunched over, walking as though I was elderly, and I couldn't stand up straight, and it hurt all the time. Jen and her family paid for her two large pieces of mesh to be removed because they feared it would take years on the NHS. This is the moment some of it was taken out. I want everybody to do something in a second. I want you to go, yay! 
The mesh may have been taken out, but Jen still has issues. Even lifting a kettle to make a cup of tea can hurt. But she says overall, her mobility and pain level has improved. Luckily, Jen's boss allows her to work from her parents' sofa, which is less painful for her. In her spare time, she works for Sling the Mesh, a campaign group which supports people who have experienced complications with mesh implants. I've kept a tally and I'm now at 182 people and these are people who've found me on Facebook and messaged me to say that they've had hernia mesh implants and they're in an awful lot of pain. There's older people, there's younger people. Um, there was a girl who was only 23. <clears throat> Hi Nick, how are you doing? While we're chatting, one of the many people she's been helping calls her for advice. How are you getting on with your hernia mesh? Thanks. Take care. Take care, Nick. Bye. She says this happens a lot. That was totally real and <laughs> really sad. <laughs> it just kind of goes to show that there isn't the support there that people need. Complications linked to vaginal mesh repairs has been called the biggest medical scandal since thalidomide. The implants were used to treat incontinence and prolapse, but some women complained they cut into tissue and were living in agony. The procedure has now been partly suspended on the NHS and a review is underway. We've come to meet one of the surgeons who was instrumental in making that happen. There's already a review into vaginal mesh. Do you think there should be a similar one for things like hernias? Definitely. I mean, I think it's the most important thing I think about all the meshes is to just remember it's the same product. It's just put in different places, different sizes, different shapes, but it's the same product. So if it's causing a problem in one area, it's likely to be causing a problem in another area, and it might have just been under the radar the whole time. Based on years of experience, Dr O'Neill has shared with us how much she believes it will cost to treat those affected by vaginal mesh complications. It's thought to be around 20,000 women. Based on sort of figures that I am aware of, it's going to be about 25, 30,000 actually. It's much higher than I had anticipated initially. Per woman? Per woman. So after some basic maths, and I think that comes to 500 million. Yeah, it does look like that, yes. Who should be covering this, this cost? It's a good question. I think the manufacturers have got a, a very critical role here. They need to look at this because they have not done the job they should do. And if the manufacturers don't step up to the plate, at the moment so far mm. they haven't, mm. it's the NHS, isn't it? It's the NHS, yeah. And that £500 million is just for vaginal mesh complications. Dr O'Neill believes treating issues with hernia mesh repairs could also cost £25,000 a patient. We found that in the past three years in England, 286,000 people have had hernia mesh repairs. Wow. And if you As we mentioned earlier, we don't know the hernia mesh complication rate, but leading surgeons believe it's between 12 and 30%, which means tens of thousands of people in the past three years alone could be affected. That's a huge number. And if all of them need management, not just pain management, but other surgical management, this is a huge uh, cost to the NHS. After this interview, we discovered the NHS had carried out even more hernia mesh repairs than we originally thought. As we mentioned earlier, there have been almost 570,000 operations in England in the past six years alone. Up to 170,000 patients could be affected. Based on Dr El Neil's findings, the cost of covering hernia mesh complications could be more than £4 billion. So who will end up coughing up the cash? After months of investigating, we've come to Westminster to meet with the chair of the all-party parliamentary group on surgical mesh implants. Hundreds have contacted our programme about this. We wanted to share some of their experiences. How many are there? Yeah, this, um, that's 95. What I've heard from doctors when I've asked these questions previously is they don't think the incidence of complication is as great with hernia mesh. Um, and they don't think that, you know, there are that many alternatives. Problem is, those are precisely the arguments that are being deployed by the clinicians and the companies to defend the use of uh, TVT uh, vaginal mesh. And, uh, I, you know, my worry is that we've potentially got another scandal on our hands with hernia mesh. We wanted to know what Owen thought of the MHRA, whose job it is to ensure medical devices are safe. Are they doing enough to be across what's going on? No. 
quite simply they're not but the truth is it reflects the uh, flawed system we have in place that neither the regulators nor the manufacturers have to follow up on problems and ultimately the companies have to take some responsibility for this it's not good enough for them to uh, you know fire and forget give this to the nhs get the nhs to to use it and then they walk away with the nhs carrying any liability because ultimately it would be the nhs we're going to end this story where we started with david we've just come for a little walk because that's all you can sort of manage now, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I used to walk uh, quite quickly, and my wife had trouble keeping up with me. And now it's quite, quite noticeable that she actually has to wait for me. I don't feel I've got much of a future. I say I have to pick myself up, and I don't think I can. And that's the truth, I don't think I can. It's embarrassing for me. Well, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah, I am. I am. The size of me. You know, I'm a big bloke. I've always been strong. I've always looked after everybody else and looked after... And I can't do that. I can't even hold my granddaughter, for God's sake. I'm sorry, I shouldn't get, get upset oh, again. But... David, please don't, please don't apologise.